We're live. Good morning, everybody. This is David and Ted and Gordon and Jordan, and Hugh will be here in a couple of moments. I forgot to send him a link to this. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're here to have just a conversation, uh, discussion, eulogy, uh, fond memories of DP Review and talk about it's going away and what that means. Um, I don't know, Jordan, I don't want to put you on the spot, but since you have probably more insight than the rest of us. Do you want to just give us a, an overview of the last couple of days, what have happened, you know, where you're going? Spot, you have yeah, I mean, I have more, in, uh, potentially more insight, but also more stuff I can't say. Yeah, so, I that is true. Yeah, I mean, I have more. Getting Hugh Jacko here, so let me try a couple of things. Okay. Hugh, getting Hugh Jacko off of you, if you could grab headphones, that would be awesome. And then I will unmute you when you give me a thumbs up. Okay, Mr. NDA uh, Jordan, let's start with you again. Yeah, I mean, yeah, largely what's in the press release there is, you know, what is actually going to happen. It does look like um, yeah, everything is going to be locked. We're going to make sure that we have all of our YouTube episodes, um, which we're still working on, and a couple of them are pretty cool, very big things, um, are going to go live before that. Um and then, yeah, eventually at some point after that, it sounds like the plug is just getting pulled on all the content. I still don't know what's happening to the YouTube channel uh, at this point. I mean, it would be great even if, you know, if they could just leave it unlisted, no comments or something yeah. like that. So it's not completely gone and the links aren't dead everywhere in the Internet. But uh, we don't know. Um, yeah, you know, it feels weird. It sucks. It feels what well, the main comment I've been getting from just about everybody is I can't believe that they're not just going to leave it up considering that, you know, Amazon owns AWS and it's their servers. Um, I, I have to guess that there's some, you know, legal or financial implications. You don't have to answer this, Jordan. This wasn't a, this wasn't a confidentiality thing. I have to imagine there's some legal or, you know, uh, financial reasons why you can't just leave it up and running. But, uh, it is kind of a bummer that 30 years of, you know, almost 30 years of information is going to go away. Um, let me open it because I already did it last year. Let me open it to, you know, Gordon or Ted or Hugh um, to get your thoughts about this. Well, let's, I mean, like what you were saying, David, about the, um, about the content just disappearing, you know, 25 years worth. Whenever anybody does any kind of camera related search, Deeper review is inevitably one of the first results that comes back. And it's not just the reviews. I mean, they, they are extremely comprehensive and excellent, but it's also the forum posts. Or for me as a journalist, even just the news articles where they will publish a press release from 1998, for example, or 99, which is almost impossible to find even on the original manufacturer's websites. So when I'm doing these retro reviews and I want to go back and get the facts mm. absolutely right, it's really useful to have that rather than just hearing that somebody thought the camera cost around $900 when it came out. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see the original press release saying this is how much it costs. And DP Review, for better or worse, is an archive. It's an encyclopedia for that information. It's yeah. so not only am I really concerned that that information could possibly go and that there's no replacement for it, but also in terms of like the ethos of the web, isn't the whole idea to kind of preserve links not yeah. to i mean the amount of lost seo and authority on that is just outrageous yeah and Hugh, i didn't get a chance to welcome you to the, the podcast because of my mistake giving you the link late so welcome to the podcast and uh let me turn it to you for your thoughts there well gordon makes a great point about archiving but i've been thinking less about the loss than what we can actually do so how much would it cost Amazon to donate the archive to the Annenberg Center at the University of Pennsylvania or uh, any library uh, at any university uh, out there? I, I mean, the cost for Amazon to say, hey, look, we'll keep it on AWS in, in uh, perpetuity. We just want to have someone to administer it. And a university uh, library makes complete sense to me. So maybe as a result of this stream, and David, thank you for, for hosting it, maybe we get people just to sign a petition or something, which is to say, hey, Amazon, just don't turn it off. Donate it. You probably get a yeah. write-off for it. 
Yeah, my only hope with them saying it would be, you know, no more content as of April and then stay live for a period of time was that they're hoping that somebody either makes an offer for it or, you know, as you're saying, makes a way for this to live on. It it just seems I mean, it seems ridiculous to me. My only possible thoughts on that is that they wrote a lot of the code for DP review, especially after the acquisition and in the time when they modernized it. And I wonder if there's some decision there that like they just don't want someone seeing the coding that they use to integrate it with other Amazon services. But I've seen how the site is coded and I know that the CMS and other things are like a billion years old and you have to use like rocks and hammers in order to get anything posted. So I don't know. That is a, that is a, a really good idea, Hugh. Um, I wonder what could be done about that. I'm sure the internet way back machine is, you know, churning a lot, trying to capture a lot of that stuff right now. Um, t- Ted, I saw you were about to, to weigh in when, when Gordon. Yeah. Started. I mean, it's just, it, it's interesting because it, uh, Hugh and I have discussed this a little bit, but it, it's, you know, when we all work in this digital realm, uh, you know, if you think of books and papers and things that tend to go to libraries or, or, or live on, uh, it, you realize how fragile all of our work is, at least in the public face. I mean, we're all dependent or a lot of us here on YouTube. And um, yeah, I mean, if, if YouTube just made a weird decision one day to do that, I mean, and who knows? I mean, I never thought you'd see DP review um, close. So it's hard to say. You know, what's interesting about that. It's, I mean, the title of this really might be, and so it goes because the reality is that it was websites like DP review which led to the demise of print publications, you know, popular photography, modern photography. I grew up with these uh, printed magazines. They would come out once a month and I would be excited and read each one cover to cover, including all the advertisements in the back. And it was really great. But the advent of websites made it uh, cheaper because it was free to us. It made it much cheaper to produce than uh, print for the publishers. And so that was inevitable. And now all of us on this call and anyone who laments the passing of DP Review uh, finds himself or herself in this really interesting situation where we've now lived long enough that we see that life is accelerating faster than we are and moving in a different direction. And in fact, it's YouTube, it's video, which killed the radio star, or in this case, the website star. You, you so said there's the a exact certain... second, the exact second someone typed that in, you wrote, you said the same thing. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Hugh, Hugh, you're absolutely right. When DP Review launched, I was working on uh, one of the big computer magazines in the UK. The predictable end to that story is that magazine is now closed, you know, like 10, 15 years ago. But I remember thinking, you know, as the gatekeepers of journalism at the time, you needed to be in a magazine. We kind of viewed websites in the mid to late 90s with, you know, a a little bit of suspicion and probably a certain amount of contempt as well. But yet there was this underlying feeling, at least for me anyway, that the work being done by Phil originally and, um, you know, on on, on Deep Review and, and also imaging resource and DC resource at the time, those big three. And on the tech uh, side, uh, sites like Allen Tech and Tom's Hardware, as it originally was back then, they were just simply doing better reviews than we were doing in print. Um, Not encumbered by, you know, I've got to do a half page review here, which is, you know, 300 words. They could do multiple 20 page reviews. And I looked at that and thought, Crikey, that really is the future. And shortly after that, I left the magazines and actually went into online myself. And as you say, the next logical step for that is that video has kind of taken over that. Although smartphones as well have, you know, reduced the appeal, you know, yeah. the market for cameras. Yeah, let me contextualize this just a little bit. You know, Amazon bought DP Review at a time when there was a point and shoot camera market. And they bought it at a time when there was no such thing as affiliate marketing. For the most part, you know, there there weren't a ton of there weren't a ton of outlets that were pointing people at purchases and cameras at that point were a huge were a huge market, and now the market is a lot smaller. The number of cameras per year is a lot smaller, and everybody can post a link and does on a YouTube short to to Amazon, and I think it's a little telling that this is a conversation of five older white guys about what's happening to a type of media 
that's rapidly changing demographics, you know, societally uh, doing the same thing. I looked at some numbers and Amazon had 797,000 employees right before COVID about. Um, and right before these two round, round, rounds of layoffs, they had 1.5 million. So they doubled their workforce in two years. And the stock is doing okay today, but you know that was an unsustainable level of growth and they knew it. And I think that things like DP Review are, are sort of the, the side effect of balancing those sheets and you know dealing with the fact that they can make revenue. You go as an Amazon affiliate and you can see the top you know, the top products to take a look at. And a lot of them are camera stuff like SD cards and stuff. And they're making a shit ton of money off of that. Um, and then it, the people it, like Jordan aren't right. Jordan, no offense, but like the amount of money that you must have been making as, a, as a contributor to DP review is less than if you and Chris had started at the beginning on YouTube and scaled it up. And so you, you know, you end up with the, the benefits and the security of Amazon and DP review, but in the long run, security. well, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I forgot. It's, it's, I it's, forgot. A, it's a, it's a I Canadian forget. definition of security. Right. I, I forgot <laughs> the inverted commas that, that Gordon likes to you. Uh, exactly right. Exactly. The, the, you know, you, you guys had, you started at the beginning and made it big, you would be in a different place creatively, but that didn't exist when you guys started, right? You would have been taking an enormous risk to do that with growing families. Um, so like, you know, I, under, you know, I understand where you, where you are and where you, where you went. Right. But I think Amazon and DP review benefited from you more than, than you, you know, not to what you deserved, I guess is what I was saying, right? You you worked for somebody else's benefit, and we've all worked for somebody else's benefit. We've all had those jobs, right? Where we're we're getting a paycheck to make somebody else awesome. Um, Jordan, I do want to ask you because I know the answer, but not everybody here probably does. Can you just tell us where you are going, and where your people can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So we are moving over to Petapixel's YouTube channel. There's a video there you can see are our dumb faces on the front page. So, you know, you're on the right place uh, to subscribe to that. We won't be putting anything out in between the end of DP review uh, to the start of May. We're going to be working on a bunch of new stuff, some bigger projects. It's actually kind of funny because we've never had a gap where we can spend a few days on an episode. So we're actually pretty excited to do uh, Imagine how larger good those, things those episodes to kick look. But we went Imagine. directly, when we switched from Camera Store to DP Review, it was same day we launched our last episode on Camera Store and our first episode on DP Review, and it almost killed me. Uh, so yeah, this time it'll be, you know, it, it'll give us a little time to do some cool stuff that we haven't done before. But yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't want, like, it's, it's great that we have a place to go. Um, I do think it's because, you know, people have gotten used to seeing our faces. They know our personalities. Um but yeah, I, I don't want that. The fact that I'm glad I've got somewhere to go to kind of wash over the fact that what happened here is a, you know, disaster. And a bunch of the people I worked with are some of the best people in the business, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't want to toot my horn too much that way, but yes, if you want more Chris and Jordan, there will be more Chris and Jordan. And I'm grateful for that, but I'm also hoping that there's more writing from Richard and Dale and stuff at other places in the future. Yeah, I knew where you guys are going, but I haven't heard about Richard and Dale at all. And Richard, you know, I, I've known those guys forever. And Richard is an honorable cyclist. And we, you know, we get on these events and have long talks together. Maybe, maybe we should talk about just a little, I don't know who wants to pick this up, about how close this community is and like how well we know each other and how DP Review existed, helped all of our channels and how all of our channels helped DP Review. I mean, this is a really symbiotic relationship with calling each other to ask, how's that camera nobody knows about? you know, going, how's your testing? What are you finding? Who wants to jump on that? You know, cause I've collaborated very recently with Chris and Jordan when we were in Japan, we did that video together and we've done it in the past on other things too. And I, what, what people don't see on the backside, I don't think is, you know, we all do our videos and it's just us in the videos all the time, but it's a very tight community behind the scenes. We all know each other from press trips. And I think the most advantageous thing for me is like Jordan and I will text and just shoot the bull sometimes, you know, and, or, uh, you know, if you do have a question about something and that's been like tremendously valuable for me, uh, DP review, obviously were very nice to me. I got featured on their site, um, 
multiple times and and they're all really great people over there i mean there's two sides to this because we've talked about the business side but there is a personal side to this too and that's where i, I think i definitely see it from because it just it, you know it, it doesn't feel so good to see people that you know and and respect have to go through something like that so yeah i think we all called everybody multiple times i mean all of us knew beforehand i think that this was going to happen and couldn't talk about it but as soon as you know, as soon as any of us found out information, we called the other and uh, I had a lot of, it was like, it was like, you know, funeral level calling people, right? You know, did you hear what happened? Could you believe it? Um, Jordan, you see the question that you can't really probably answer too much, but uh, this is the other thing that I've been asked more than anything else. So I thought I'd throw this up here. Uh, yeah, totally. I mean, we're getting it from everyone, especially Jared Poland. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting it for you from him. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are a few, like, obviously you've touched on the fact that, yes, we have families and things like that. And this news, like, we did have a heads up, but we did not have a lot of lead time with this, you know. Um, it takes would take a while for us to, you know, we looked seriously at, you know, best case scenario numbers and stuff like that. It would take a while for us to be able to, financially get to where we're comfortable with our, you know, families and maintaining our quality of life, our mortgages, all that kind of stuff is a big part of it. Um, and Jaron did reach out to us, you know, even well before this was announced, he's been talking to us about this mm -hmm. for years. Um, but also I like collaborating. Like it was one of the big reasons we went to DP review. You know, it's, I respected those guys enormously, but also at the camera store, I always joke about how it's like, okay, we've shot some tests with equipment that by no means is adequate. You know, it's not a lab test that we were doing at the camera store. We push the button and we hope to God we're right. Where when we went over to DP review, I'm, you know, mm. sending everything over. Look, here's our sample shots. Does this line up with what you're doing? Right. Things like that. And, you know, we're not going to have that same level of support. You know, Petapixel doesn't have a lab, you know. Um, but just to have a second person, you know, it wasn't always just like, hey, this isn't technically correct. But a lot of the feedback that we would get is like, hey, wait, why don't you address this? Or I think a better way to explain this concept would be this. I really love that. And, you know, because probably half of our videos are embargoed before we can put them out. It's nice to work with a team that you can actually, mm -hmm. I mean, you talked about us messaging each other. It, it's a very similar thing. Like, Hey, can you, uh, do you agree with this? Are you finding the same kind of weird hiccups, stuff like that? Uh, it's going to yeah. be nice to have still a team that I'm working with um, that I can get feedback from on that. I think that's really going to improve the show uh, quite a bit. Yeah. I, get, I ran a magazine before I, I went, to, to PR for a while. And I loved working in the publishing industry and nobody ever said to me, Hey, why don't you become the editor in chief of your own magazine? I mean, it would have been, first of all, it would have been astronomically difficult and, you know, impossible to do, but because I liked being the editor in chief of a publication and working with my managing editors and my features editors and my photo editors and my contributors, like I liked doing that and that I liked getting regular paycheck to do what I loved doing. Right. And some people who I think have asked me this question about you guys don't realize that there's not everyone's the same kind of creator, right? There's the, there's the creator who does it and likes to do it and likes to collaborate and likes the security of it. And then there's the collaborator who wants to go out on their own and you don't have, you don't have to be like, we're doing it completely independently. It's a completely acceptable choice to do what you are doing as part of something else, because that's what publishing has been for 99% of all of publishing the single channel or single person channel is new and there's no reason you guys should have to do that that said you should have done that I mean, that's do you think <laughs> do you think though that this is this is where it's going it's that we're going from publications with multiple people working for them almost anonymously in a house style i remember on magazines finding it very strange to have to say we think this our opinion is this it was never my or i and then when youtube first started i found it very uncomfortable to actually go back to expressing my opinion as me mm -hmm. and even though it's always just been me or mostly me you look back at my first videos and i would say our feeling is this we think that this and i'm thinking what who's this you know it's the royal we you know it's it's the split it's, personality thing and then, and then while i'm doing this really <laughs> stuffy presentation you've got all these other youtubers 
coming out of nowhere to me as someone who'd been doing journalism for 15 years prior to that and being a lot more exciting, a lot more interesting and being very personal. And I think one of the really revealing things about how the industry in terms of presenting reviews has changed is that when the DP review news hit, uh, most of my social channels, obviously this is very much dependent on the rooms that you're hanging out in you know other rooms could be having different conversations but the places where i was looking everyone was like cool i really hope that chris and jordan and those other guys are okay yeah chris was the best jordan's the best and those other guys were great too and nobody really seemed to know their names and and kind of working anonymously (laughs) is has its benefits but i i think that was one of the big downsides to dp review and other publications as a big site where you would go and read a review you weren't always aware of who'd written it or you didn't really know them and I remember like when it was just Phil Askey doing it and he brought on Simon Johnson in the forums people would say oh I saw Phil's review on this and it's like didn't you read the byline it was there were only two people working there now he's doubled his workforce but it's the other guy you know you should be talking about him but on YouTube it's so much more personal and I think that is definitely the way forward for better or worse for for reviews it's all about the individual or the partnership in the case of chris and jordan gordon i'd I'd like to uh, agree with you Uh, let me agree with you and and take it one step further because if one looks at historical patterns i think you're right it is inevitable that websites are not just dp review but websites are uh, rapidly becoming a historical footnote and uh, Jordan, do you mind if, if I share with, with everybody the, the one line that I, I texted you um, when I got the news? No, go for it. I said, and I, and I also texted Chris the, the same thing. I, I said to each of them that uh, I'm sorry to hear about DP Review, but congratulations because I think that the two of you are bigger than, than any of them now. And, and what do I mean by that? Uh, What I mean is that for me, uh, not only having come to know you over a number of years now and enjoying you at a personal level, but in an ever more fractious world, what you bring is not only expertise, but you bring a positive relationship. You bring humor. You you bring a welcome distraction and uh, a reassurance that I get from street photography, actually, that the world is not a uniformly terrible place. And it is the case, Gordon, that once again, the business model of the solopreneur or YouTube duo, in fact, the reason why I think you know this, Jordan, the reason, and the other guys know this because I've said it, that the reason why Claudia is such an integral part of Three Blind Men and an Elephant is because I came back from one of these press trips watching you and Chris just nail it without scripts or anything. And I said, that's not fair. You know, Claudia, you need to help me. And so so she does. So I, I think it's it's very interesting. It, it's inevitable that the the financials of a solopreneur or a duo uh, and the the freedom uh, exceed that which can be done through uh, a website. But on the other hand, I absolutely understand that you have to you had to have a bridge to where you go next. Yeah. And I'll tell you, in this notion of, hey, let me not lament it. You know, the king is dead long with the king, but what can we do constructively? <laughs> the reason why I'd reached out to you guys was to say, would you like me to run an Indiegogo campaign for you just to, to get you going? And, and I'm not joking about that. I, I hold the two of you in such high regard uh, and, and see you as so different and so welcome in the totality of of our ecosystem that I suspect uh, and maybe guys who are following along uh, in the comments can just give some feedback. Would that have resonated for anybody? I mean, it's after the fact, it doesn't matter. And I'm delighted that you guys are landing uh, on your feet at Petapixel. And I'm glad that Jaron was talking to you many months beforehand, but you guys are, especially given that you're Canadian, a Canadian national treasure. I think you're a global treasure. You're like, I mean, there's a lot yeah. of YouTubers in Canada, but <laughs> that's true. And I do like I at least nine. 
Well, yeah, before you I, reply to that, <laughs> just one second. I do want to give it like because we never mentioned this. We're talking about all of DP Review, so I do want to say like Dale, Richard, Barney, like Rishi, all of those guys. Like we all know those people. They're not the public yep. face because they're not a YouTube channel. But just so everybody in this video knows, when we we're talking about like Chris and Jordan being a treasure, like everybody there is a treasure. Everyone there is getting screwed by this. Everyone there has worked their asses off for years and years that is true. and years for way too little money and way too little appreciation. And I, I just want to, it, it boggles my mind how hard the DP review guys worked at every press junket that I ever went on. I would be at dinner and some of those guys would be writing furiously. We would be at a launch event and I would watch Rishi typing with his laptop like this because there was nowhere to put the laptop and he had to get the news out. So when we say, you know, we have Jordan here. So when we say Jordan and Chris, it's because they're in front of us, but everybody, like if we could save the whole staff, I would have, I would have wanted to save the whole staff. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Back to Jordan with everybody uh, telling you how much they love you. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing to add about that, Dave, too, is that when, you know, I've known Chris and Jordan probably longer than I did, you know, when I started doing press trips and that's when I met Rishi and Barney and, and, and the rest of the, the, the people that, that aren't on the YouTube face of it. But one thing that always really impressed me is they had so many, there's such a diversity of viewpoints. Like, you know, Rishi is, comes from it, from this <laughs> annoyingly scientific, you know, uh, and, and, you know, whereas Jordan and I are more like, you know, just size it up. Is this useful? Whatever. So, but that is kind of inspiring because I mean, that definitely, I think from my own content made me realize that there's different angles that you can look at something from. And I mean, Jordan got to work directly with that, but I mean, that was a really inspiring thing about DP review. Um, and just, yeah, the work ethic, it was crazy with those guys and, and still is like they're going under and they're still pumping out mm. <laughs> you know, content that they care about. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah. There Guys, was I no do mic have drop. In about two minutes. So if you see okay. me drift, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's, there was no mic drop. There was no like, you know, quiet quitting here. The, the team is still doing what the team is required to do. And that, that kind of boggles my mind. I guess the, the question I think he was leading to was, uh, how best to support you guys. And I think obviously the best is, uh, keep watching them on Petapixel. Uh, and I, you know, full disclosure, I write for Petapixel Freelance, which means I am still a colleague of Chris and Jordan's because I technically was a contributor to DP Review who never contributed in the last 10 years. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with Chris and Jordan more. But uh, the answer is keep searching for, you know, keep looking for the guys when you see the DP Review staff show up at other sites, which I hope they do. Uh, read them. And the best thing you can do to keep Chris and Jordan uh, eating is to thumbs up their videos on Petapixel and to subscribe and to tell your friends to subscribe. The second best thing, sorry, that you can do to support them is right now subscribe to all of our channels and thumbs up our videos as well because as the, the quiet support structure for those guys, if we're not here, they're not here. I just That's it, right? Um, Jordan, though, uh, over to you about all those comments. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to double back on there. Um, going back a little ways, like uh, one thing that you touched on, David, that I do really want to emphasize is um, I like making videos. Um, that's my main passion. Like I co-host under duress, but that's what I really enjoy doing. And working with other people means I can focus on that. Uh, which is, you know, I don't enjoy, like I am technically a small business owner. I hate all that aspect of it. The more stuff that I can pass over to people who are better at it and focus on the things that I like to do, that's great. Um, so that is, yeah, part of it that I definitely wanted to touch on. And again, just uh, going back to what you were saying about the staff at DP Review, like that's why I was so like, I didn't leave the camera store because, you know, my conditions were bad there or anything like that. I went to DP review because I saw those guys work and I was already in contact with them for information and had so much respect for them. I was just like that. Th that's the team I want to be with. And, you know, going back to the website, I wouldn't be here because I got a job at a camera store and knew nothing about photography. I was a videographer. Um, you know, I went in to buy some, high eight tapes and you know <laughs> was like ah, i guess i'm unemployed so i might as well talk to these guys got a job didn't know shit about photography so i was on dp review cramming like every night trying to make mm -hmm. sure i actually knew what i was talking about so 
I've been on that, you know, not the full 25 years, but certainly the last 20 years I've been using that site. And, you know, now here I have a photography YouTube show and, you know, love taking pictures. And that wouldn't have happened without that resource. I would have gone back into work. They would have realized I didn't know what I was talking about. And I'd go find something else to do with my life. So really, this does all come back to that. And, you know, why did I go to DP Review when there were so many other sites out there? It's because the writing was the best and the information, you know, was the best at that point. Right. Yeah. Um, with people having to jump, that might be a good place to wrap it up unless, you know, anybody has a last, a last second question for anyone, but I, I think we're on agreement here. Uh, terrible for the industry. I think as, as I talked about in the last live view, uh, live podcast, whatever, I'm a little sad right now. So I'm having trouble thinking, uh, it's terrible for the industry. It's terrible for the contributors in the industry. And I think it's bad for the manufacturers too. The fewer places there are to talk about the equipment, the less people know about the equipment and the fewer things people buy and the worse the industry does. And then you get in a cycle where sales are down and, you know, people aren't, people aren't shopping and they aren't buying. Uh, so ironically, this even kind of screws Amazon in the long run, right? The fewer people there are talking about cameras, the fewer people they are going to go to go buy those cameras. Um, I'm going to put that up there as the last comment. I want to, I want to thank you guys. I know Gordon also has to jump in a second. Um, uh, I, you know, when I, when you're like a core of the people that I called when I heard about this and to be able to share this on camera with you guys is I think part of a testament to what DP review really helped do, right? They, they made a market that didn't exist before them and none of us could have come in their footsteps if they hadn't been there. Um, so, I, I Dave, while we, have, while we have Jordan yeah. Hick, we just briefly yeah. ask him, um, can we expect the videos going forward with Petapixel to be in a different style, a different lens, different sort of thing? Are they going to be similar to the ones that we know and love, or are you going to be allowed to do some different things? Still be on the GH5, just like they always have. <laughs> <laughs> the GH6. Uh, oh, no, right. yeah. More puppetry? The, it's behind me right now. <laughs> yes. We're able to get us <laughs> out. Of... It's moved during yes. the video. That's the scary thing. <laughs> oh god, he's doing it. May, um, may I, I, mean, may I like, ask? So go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. I interrupted you. I was just gonna like the main the style of the videos. We don't want to change too dramatically. That's what people like, you know. Um, but it does certainly open up some new opportunities. We really want to do a little bit more storytelling. Uh, and a little more emphasis on photographers. I mean, Ted has already left here, but uh, you know, he's he's done some brilliant work like that. And we'd like to do a bit more of that kind of thing. And I mean, even though DP Review never told us, hey, you need to include this technical information and this technical information, you do feel a little bit obligated. Like it's it goes along with the name. Uh, so we're going to focus more on what we find interesting and exciting about the stuff as opposed to rattling off specs a little bit more. But yeah, we're not going to change the whole feel of the show. We're still going to be, you know, a couple of like the drinking is at uh, Christmas is still going to be a thing. <laughs> the puppets are still going to be a thing. My idiot twin brother, Gordon, is still going to be showing up. Not it's this so Gordon. Bad. I like this Gordon. So uh, and I apologize for all the confusion that this has caused mm, yeah, to you, to. the Gordon that I like, Gordon. Mm. <laughs> may, may I ask, may I make one request of you, Jordan and, and Chris going forward? Yeah. Can you promise that you will never use chat GPT or any other AI <laughs> tool to do any of your work? I, at the, this point, I'm not. <laughs> when the AI holds me down and tells me that I have to use it, then, yeah. you know, then we'll, which is, I think, three months out now at this point, then, yeah, I'll cave. <laughs> This is this is Hugh of Hugh's horse and buggies asking people to please please not buy the newfangled horseless carriages. So if you could if you could keep from buying those horseless carriages and keep the horse buggy and whip industry in business, that would be wonderful. Um, every use of Chat GPT, every TikTok <laughs> video feeds the beast. All right, I'm gonna go TikTok something that Chat GPT wrote just to see what happens. So. <laughs> Everybody, I really I appreciate everybody's time, everybody who's watching the stream and everyone who's going to be watching this in replay. I really appreciate your time. You guys out there are why we do what we do, and it's why Deep Review worked so hard to do it. So I know everybody appreciates everyone out there in the audience. Uh, give everybody a chance to say goodbye before I add the bra in the broadcast. So any last words? Start with you. 
No, thanks okay. for having me. I'm excited for, for the entire team. Every single one of the people on DP Review is going to land well. I absolutely believe that. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I look forward to seeing what everybody does, uh, both Chris and Jordan, most obviously, because they're in front of us, but also the rest of the team who I, I know and I'm very fond of. So uh, good luck to all of you. Uh, we're all behind you. And uh, let's see what happens. And because Chris never lets you get the last word, Jordan, I'm going to let you get the last word. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Like you guys have all been such a huge support over the years, well before this news came out. So, you know, thanks for sticking with us. And yeah, to all the people who are, you know, really angry about what happened to DP review, definitely let your voice be known. I mean, Hugh makes a great point about, you know, Amazon should donate this to a university or something. I don't know. I'm not privy to those. I mean, I'm still technically a freelancer, to be honest. I, I wasn't there when these meetings were going on. Um, I hope that can happen because I do rely on that information constantly. Uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult to stay informed without it. So hopefully someone can save some of that. Uh, I know it's getting, you know, brought onto the internet archive, but that's not going to show up in search results. So it's not going to yeah. be very useful for a lot of people so yeah. um yeah but definitely like follow us we are excited that we get to keep making our show like i said that's what i love doing and it's it's going to continue and i definitely want to get all of you on our show again uh as soon as possible you know we talk about we want to collaborate with photographers more and you guys are all fantastic and i want to see that in the future Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for participating. I hope you have a fantastic day. And uh, leave comments after this is over if you're watching the replay for Chris and Jordan and Rishi and Barney and Richard and all the Dale and all the DP Review staff, and I will forward it to all of them so they can see your heartfelt wishes. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time. Have a great day.